Okay, so good day everyone, welcome back to another Bush Creek fire time tutorial. So uh, in this in this video, we're gonna be tying up this little number, which is what I call my shopper, which is uh, not a necessary glamorous way to describe this as a soft hackle hopper pattern. Um, it's been pretty productive over the last uh, season for me. Um, sits pretty, it sits low on the water, but it sits up and sits high. And um, But uh, the soft hackle in it really sort of gives it some enhancement. It's, Pretty easy to tie, it's not terribly difficult. You do need some, I guess you could say some specific materials, but but it's pretty straightforward to tie. So without much ado, we'll get on into it. So um, the hook I use for this is a Mapec Terrestrial size 14. Now, I mean, you could use, you know, something similar, a stimulator hook would probably do the same sort of thing. Um, but uh, I, I like the Mapec hooks, I like the shape of them and, and uh, it seems to work pretty well for this. So to start with, I'm just gonna tie on some, some thread. I'm just using some brown Simplify uh, wax thread. I'm just gonna start at the eye or just behind the eye. And I'm just gonna bring this thread down and, and form a bit of an underbody. And I'll clean away this waste piece here. And then bring this thread right down hard into the bend. Um, you can sort of terminate it wherever you feel comfortable, but uh, but I like to bring it right down and make sure I've got plenty of body in this uh, in this fly. So the tail for this is um is emu uh, emu hill or emu fibers, uh, dyed uh, red, sort of crimson red, scarlet red. And I'm going to take I don't know maybe say half a dozen of these fibers off, just tear them away from the from the stem there, and then just pinch pinch the uh, pinch the ends close. And I'm just going to catch that in at the butt with a couple of turns. I want as much length as I can can. You can make the tail, I guess, as long as you like or as short as you like. You know, I like it sort of around about that, half the length of shank, I think that works well. A couple of turns there, and then I'm just gonna come in underneath those fibers and, and help lock that in. So the next piece I'm gonna add in is, is a piece of uh, piece of nylon that I'm gonna use for, for ribbing this, uh, this particular fly. And I'm um, just gonna find it it's sitting on my desk. Here we go. But um, and all I'm using is just a you know piece of tippet material or a bit of nylon, um, you know, cotton sort of thing if you like, whatever is handy, something nice and thin anyway. And uh, and I'm just gonna catch that in at the butt here. Now you notice I've left the top fairly long. I'm just gonna come up the body a little bit, tie in these butts of that uh, emu, and then come up four or five mil, I guess. And then I'm going to pull this tag bit back and then come back down over the top of it. And this, this, uh, this helps lock that nylon in. So when I use it for uh, wrapping and doing the overwrap later, um, it has less of a tendency to pull out. So I'm going to do that and I'm just going to trim away that waist end. Bring that thread down to the butt. So the underbody for this particular fly is, uh, I have this mix, which is Kapok. Uh, it's sort of a gold and yellow kapok and a gold and yellow e dyed possum mix. It's about a 75% kapok and 25% possum, but you can play around with that mix. But you do need the kapok because the kapok is the bit that's going to actually really uh, provide that additional buoyancy to the fly. So all I'm going to do here is, is I'll just take a bit of this out, sort of using the big clump, and um, and I'm just going to dub fairly fairly tight sort of a body to this to this fly and um as best as you can this, this kapok's a bit uh, a bit scrubby but anyway and um you know you don't have to be super specific but you do want to you do want a fair bit of kapok in there and you do want to do it reasonably tight um so that this kapok really packs in and you can get as much of that material onto the fly as you possibly can so i'm just going to you know, sort of take my time and nice tight dubbing. Again, I don't have to be very specific about, you know, that how tight this is or what this sort of looks like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna overwrap that anyway. But um, but really what I want to try and do is make sure I get as much of this this K-pop dubbing packed in there um, in, in the underbody as I can. Just take the time, stretch that out a little bit and um, and then just bring that in. Just keep dubbing that up forming a bit of a sort of a taper, I guess, but you don't have to be super, um, 
super tidy with this. Now I want to bring this body up to around about, I guess you could say, um, you know, two, half to two thirds of the shank. Um, as much as you're comfortable bringing up, I guess, but you want to sort of create that abdomen shape that, that hoppers will have. And um, so you just take your time and, and add in bits here and build up that, that body into that point. I'll just keep oh, straight there and catch that. There we go. Just taking my time, bringing it up. Until I get to probably to around about there, I guess. A couple of turns just to, to lock it in. Now I'm just going to bring some thread in, uh, sorry, some wax, and just a little bit of wax just to catch in the next material. So the next material is is just a cock saddle. Um, I usually so probably something around about a 14, maybe a little bit smaller. Um, you don't really want a long one, but you do want uh, you know some length in it. So this is, you know, I guess yeah, probably about a 14. And um, it dyed uh, gold and yellow. Um, you could go a little bit darker if you wanted. You could go like a brown olive or uh, you could even go into a full olive green. Um, equally work as well, but I like the, the golden, golden uh, olive color. And I'm just going to catch that in with a few turns. And then while I'm here, I'll just make sure that in there is not going to get in the way later. Trim that away. So from here, I'm going to do one full turn. Oh, let me just cross this over. I'll work this around. No, doesn't want to play the game. Take this out and try it again. Just, just didn't want to twist in the right way. So I'll try it. Instead of trimming all that off, we'll just leave this a little bit proud. And I'll make a few turns. Take some two or three turns. Right. It's looking a bit no, it's still going to be twist. Okay. Yeah, we work with children and animals. Right, oh, here we go. So full turn right in front of the body there. And then I want I don't want it really super palmed, but I don't want it too loose. So I'm talking about a millimeter maybe between your turns as you come down and then bring that down all the way back to the tail, final turn there. And then from here, I'm going to grab this piece of mono, catch that hackle in at the back there, it broke off, but you might have caught it, I think. And then just counter wrap that, locking that hackle in all the way back up to the body. And I'm just moving this around to free it up from some of these fibers and hopefully don't trap too many of that, those cockackle fibers down onto the body. And we'll just work that way back up and then capture this mono in a few turns to lock that in. I like to trim away this waste piece. I think that's probably caught that all right. We might have saved it. All right, so the next um, the next piece of material is the golden pheasant tippet. So you want to find one that's a reasonable size. You don't want it too big. So you're probably looking at maybe the maximum hackle is, is maybe the length of the shank. Um, so find one of your smaller golden pheasant tippets. And I'm just going to uh, hackles, and I'm going to just catch that tip of that in here and then draw these fibers back. I'll try and use up as many as these as I can. I'll leave myself three or four that I can use to tie in like that. This one's going to trip away. Keep there and then come in and catch that golden pheasant in right in front of that cock hackle by the tip. So from here, using my hackle pliers, I'm just gonna come in and basically draw these fibers back and, and treat this the way I would with a soft hackle. Now, you might find that the golden pheasant wants to twist, but if you sort of take your time and just encourage it to sit in the right way, it'll sort of shape itself out 
in the long run. And I'm just going to use up this tip, this hackle, all the way around, use all the, trying to keep that hackle right up against the cock hackle as much as possible. All right. And I'll lock this off with a couple of turns, two or three turns. And then I can trim away this butt section here. Trim that off. So the, the next two pieces is essentially the, the thorax hackles. So this flies over, it's, uh, it's palmered forward with a cock hackle, which is then up, palmered over the top of with an emu hackle. Now, so what I have here is some emu, uh, an emu feather dyed uh, brown olive. Now, I, you know, you don't want really long lengths in the emu feather, but you do want some length. So you're probably looking at something at least twice the gape of your hook um, and something that's reasonably soft. Um, emu can be a little bit all over the shop, um, depending on you know where you pull the feather from on the bird, because <clears throat> that's what we do in Australia. We uh, wrestle emus and capture the feathers that way. So I'm just going to pull this apart and then snip off this end, and I'm going to tie this in by that tip the same way I would as if I was doing a soft tackle. A little bit of wax there just to help rip it, catch it in a couple of turns. And then I'm going to come back to my, uh, my cock hackle and saddle. And again, trim away the front end here. And catch that in with another couple of turns as well. And then, and then just bring this thread down to the front. Towards the eye and then bring it back up. And that just locks all those two hackles in. I'm going to go back to my dubbing. Now you could, and I quite often, change the color of the thorax dubbing. I might go something a little bit more brown olive, um, but for this one, I'll just keep it with uh, with the standard material I've had, I have here. And um, and again, all I'm gonna do is just, just do a, a, another underbody, dubbed underbody for the thorax area. Now, you haven't got a lot of space here, so you don't wanna, you don't wanna really sort of overpack it, otherwise you run the risk of having trouble doing the, the hack length. But, um, but you do want to try and keep a fair bit of this, th this uh, thorax area packed up so that um, it helps support the fly when it's in the water. Just a little bit more, that's a rubbish piece, that one. And uh, a little bit more, just in the front here. Finishing just behind the eye. Right, with, uh, with my cock hackle, I'm just going to come over and do full turn right in front of that golden visit tippet and maybe one, two, perhaps three turns of, of a cock hackle and then capture that in with a couple of turns and pull that back and maybe one in front of it just to keep the crowd. And I'm gonna trim this waste piece or this surplus piece away. And then straight up, same as you would a soft hackle, I'm going to come in and do the same thing, but with the emu. So I'm going to do one turn at the back and then just basically run it in between these cock hackles, or these cock hackle fibers, as best I can. And uh, you can brush it out later. And then what I want to try and do is finish at the front here with a really good turn, maybe even two of that emu right up behind the eye. Capture that in. One, a couple of turns to capture that in. Draw all these fibers back and then do three turns just to lock it. Trim this piece away and then a little bit of wax just to finish this off. Just standard old time wax is, I find better. And then all I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a couple of two, three turn whip finish. Three. Draw that up and then maybe another two or three whip finishes just, just to be sure. Let's create a little bit of a head here. Three. Pull that away. Take up tension on the thread. Trim away that thread. And then from here, I can just use my fingers to sort of pull out these fibers, hopefully, sort of square them up, particularly the cock hackle and the emu away from itself. Draw the golden pheasant up. And that's the shopper 
supply, the soft tackle popper. You find that uh, the you know, this pheasant tippet here really sort of starts to give the impression of, of a hopper. Um, the red thing at the back here will give it a nice tag and that'll help represent the legs. Capoc body really gives it some life, some buoyancy, assisted here by the cockhackle, which really sort of just the same way we would do, you know, like an elk caddis caddis and that cockhackle provides some extra lift. But then this emu at the front uh, really sort of provides a bit of a buzz around the thorax area and gives some movement to the whole fly, even more movement than what you get out of the tippet. And the emu itself is pretty mobile and, and because of it's stuck in between the cockhackle, um, it, it really has less of a tendency to sort of collapse down. But, uh, but that's it, that's the, uh, the shopper, soft tackle hopper pattern. As I said, it's pretty easy to tie, there's not a lot to it. You do need some specific materials, but, but once you have those at hand, um, it, it, it's, it's a fairly simple sort of fly to tie. And, you know, I guess it's sort of really starting to verge on a bit of a stimulator pattern, which, which I suppose in some respects it's close to doing so. But, um, but it works really well here, it has worked really well here um, during the hopper season and even, um, even late, in, very late in our season. Uh, I was catching flies on this you know, only last week and I caught about a dozen, fly, a dozen fish on this, this fly and, uh, and that's late in the season here in Australia. So. Try it. Give me, give me a little shout out if it works for you. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching. Tight lines.